China at the moment had a 10 second advantage over Italy and uh, kept that having gone through the first shoot and out onto that first 800 meter run now. So our first four teams are only separated by 15 seconds which frankly is very very little. It definitely is all to play for and it's going to be interesting the more experienced teams are China, Belarus and Korea but up there in the mix are Italy at the moment who are a younger more novice team and they've had a, a great day I mean being in, in second place before the combine is already a big achievement for uh, them. Ab absolutely. And we, again, we have uh, 15 teams in the competition. Unfortunately, the United States had to withdraw. We, you, you, as you recall, that uh, we didn't get the U.S. on the horses. They actually had a problem in the warm-up arena. One of the athletes, Margot Zaxon, uh, took a fall. She's with her coach. Uh, they're dealing with, uh, with that situation. And uh, we're down to 14 teams uh, in the combined event this afternoon. It's actually become um, more condensed. We've got the top four teams who started within 15 seconds of each other, and then actually Russia in fifth, down at 38 seconds behind the leading team. And it'll be interesting to see if Russia can actually catch any of those teams ahead of them. They've got their work cut out, but um, they are very quick on the combine. They've got some quick runners, um, those two girls. So it'll be interesting to see if, if it can be an exciting race at the end. I'm hoping to have something here. I mean, you're right. Russia is the sort of the dark horse uh, coming in. They're in fifth place. Vakradinova and her teammate Kuroskina. They have a ton of experience. They're great shooters and they're solid runners. So they may be able to run themselves. They really have to, They only have to run themselves up 18 seconds to move into the podium range. Actually, I correct myself. They have to run themselves 28 seconds. But again, in the combine, that's not at all insurmountable. Especially when you've got two athletes to um, you know to help break that gap and um, I think China are probably secure. I know you can never say that in the combined and in pentathlon. Nothing is over until the last shoot really. Yeah. Um, but the, definitely the other podium places are still up and very open. You've got Lan Wangsha uh, from uh, China as our leaders. Again, uh, she's, this is her second shooting series. She needs to um, uh, get five green lights every time an athlete shoots. Uh, and hits, the target turns from red to green. She needs five lights. Um, and it's difficult for us to, to actually see the, the, how she's doing, although I see some green. And she's uh, off. Yeah, that oh, must have been pretty quick. That, yeah. that wasn't many more than five shots there, I don't think. And you, as we saw, the um, Italian athlete only just, I'm sorry, the Belarusian athlete only just coming into the um, shooting range as um, Angela Lang was actually leaving the shooting range. So I think for the Chinese, I mean, she's on her second, her final 800 meters for the first runner. She'll hang on, hand off to her key, teammate, Qian Chen. Qian Chen won the World Cup in Chengdu uh, this year. She's a very solid combined athlete. It's really uh, in China, it's, it's for China to lose, frankly. I mean, they're way out in front. The race is really going to be down to the silver and bronze medals, you know, for the podium. Um, we're having a little bit of difficulty as I think as our cameras are changing from camera positions. There's a little lag so as we're following. But again, our leader, uh, Lang from China, on her last 800 meter loop. And it's interesting how some countries have chosen their teams for this event. This is the very first day of the World Championships week. Some of those athletes will be competing on the Sunday. So it's a long, long week ahead of them. They've got the individual event and then also the team, um, the mixed relay on Sunday. So. Some of them, some of these teams have put in a very strong team in, in order to try and win a medal, and I think China are one of those, and it's, it's paying off at the moment. But a few of the other countries might have chosen a younger team to give them the experience at, at this senior level. That, and as well as, as there are some veterans out here who've had some challenges in the shooting event. Uh, you know, for example, uh, Margot Zach from the United States, Samantha Murray from Great Britain, wanted the experience to have the opportunity to, who are, and they're both medal contenders, you know, in terms of the individual. So they get another opportunity to work some of those uh, jitters out in their first, uh, in the first shooting series. That was really the intent behind, I think, uh, behind their participation. But I know um, Great Britain, especially. Um, I mean, they had a very disappointing ride after such a great swim. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster day for them, and they're you know, starting five minutes and twenty seconds behind the leader. And some people might think, you know, why? But for them, it's very much about using this as a. We've got a very young athlete, Alice Fitton, who's new to the senior level, and then Samantha, who's had a few problems with her shooting this year. So actually, it's a great um, opportunity for them just to get a chance to race and to experience it's the Senior World Championship um, atmosphere here as well. Oh yeah, and it is all about the atmosphere. And, uh, and Lang is uh, completing her second 800 meter and handing off to teammate Qian Chen, 
who is now headed into the shooting range for her first shooting series, the third shooting series for the Chinese team, but the first for Qian Chen. And again, uh, she's an extraordinarily strong athlete, came from a boxing background. She, they, they, China's been on top all day long. I mean, they fenced well, swam well, rode well, and here they are way out. And, and Qian Chen actually was one of the very first who uh, picked up the combined event so easily. She medaled in 2009, the first year we had the World Championships in this combined event. I think she might have even won the gold. I know she was on the podium anyway and really took to the event straight away and hasn't had any real falters along the way. I mean, and look at her first shooting series. That was certainly less than 15 seconds. So uh, we don't have a clock in our studio, but no question was under 15, which is all she needs to do. It'll be interesting now to see how hard she runs because I mean, we saw the change over there and they've, they've opened up their lead substantially and you know, she might well run this first lap hard and then take it a little bit easier on the, on the second lap just to save oh. her legs for the individual at yeah, least. There's no, no, there's interesting no, to see. No need, you know, I mean, she's, uh, they're way out front and again, we're trying to, let's follow, see what we've got going on in the silver and bronze race. Again, China, the overwhelming uh, leader in the women's combined event here in the final discipline of the women's relay at the Modern Pentathlon World Championships from Warsaw, Poland. It's a bit of a gray day. We were all looking forward to the sun coming out, but it seems summer has left us here. It's a cool, cool it afternoon. Does, I, I think the athletes during the ladder competition this morning in the fence were feeling the cold slightly, but I'm sure now they're actually benefiting from it. As long as they've warmed up appropriately, it means they won't lose as much um, salts or anything, and it'll probably be easier to recover from after competing in this more clement environment for running. And, and there's no question. I mean, these, the environment makes a big difference. We have we, in World Cup events in Category A, which are the top-level competitions uh, globally. They do everything from uh, competing in Doha, Qatar, in the desert, you know, Sarasota, Florida, in, in what is Florida humidity and heat. And uh, so they get all uh, they get all types of all types of weather environments. So I think this this weather here today is is just ideal. I think for this particular event. And we're following second here. China again, our leader. And I think Italy have certainly been overtaken. I see them coming around the top now. I'm not quite sure if they've hung on to medal position or if they've been um, pushed back to fourth just yet. There's a lot of movement in the field be, uh, behind China. That's, uh, that, that's for sure. It's difficult for us to see here in the studio. But uh, the cameras are following our leader, Qian Chen. She's in for her second shooting series, second and final sh series, I might add. And uh, I have a feeling she's going to do five for five or something very close to it. That really is a lap of honor. And that was five for five. I counted that. <laughs> so it really is a lap of honor now for it China. Is. Um, it is. Great competition, and you know they will be able to relax and enjoy this medal and take the confidence onto the individual. Because for all the athletes here, yes, the relays are important, but the individual competition will be their main focus, especially for the athletes such as Kane Chan when she's won world medals. You know, quite a few of them now, and she'll be looking to add this 2014 title along with this. Um, uh, relay that she'll now most certainly be able to. Well, what a great start for off. the Chinese! I mean, they have a, they've got four, uh, you know, girls here in this in this competition, this World Championships for all events, and to start off on day one with a gold medal, and not just a gold medal, but a decisive win. Uh, without, you know, she's probably running 75 percent out there. I mean, they really have dominated from the start. They were um, came out, you know, well, just behind um, Belarus in the um, mm -hmm. in the fencing, but they've stayed at the top all day and they haven't really faltered. And that was a classic example. The final match of the day was China versus Belarus in the fencing, and China won 2-0. I'm sorry, it's exactly the other way around. Belarus run 2-0, and uh, and that made the difference, uh, you know, in the terms of the fencing result. But China's hung in there on every discipline, and uh, you're you're looking at the result right here.
they just have a great program. Um, and it's delightful to see the, the World Championships. It's, you know, it, they work the bugs out on the first day. It's a week-long competition. Organizers, it's, it's challenging for organizers. You're putting five events, five disciplines uh, that'll be that over the course of a, a single stadium. And it's, it's always interesting to find a venue that can accomplish that. Uh, they have that here in Warsaw. And then they, uh, you know, like anything else, there's always a lot that goes on behind the scenes. The organizers have really done a great job. Uh, again, the bugs tend to work themselves out on day one. Yeah, most um, of some of these athletes as well as the um, organizers. So there we can see Chen really just jogging in. What a lovely feeling that must be to know that her and her teammate have worked so well together today and can just enjoy this moment and yeah, look forward to the rest of the week with such confidence. And know they're coming home with at least one gold medal. Exactly, yeah. and not only for them, it'll also boost the rest of the team as well. Absolutely, and you're crossing the finish line now. And she's Qian Chen. Qian Chen and her teammate Wang Xia Liang have pulled it off, and they are our world champions in the uh, relay event, women's relay event here at the Modern Medina World Championships from Warsaw, Poland. What a great event. What a, that smile tells it all. She's hugging uh, the first Chinese gold medalist ever at the Olympic Games. Uh, it's great that he's here to watch that. Obviously a hero for them. Germany was Well, we are certainly focused on China. <laughs> and so, uh, Korea finishing now. And we're still looking at China. That's really great. <laughs> yeah, there's certainly been a focus of the cameras today, and it's great to see the leaders. But I'm sorry we're not being able to bring we would, you the. Um, we would love to the bring you these the, silver the, and bronze medals. Rest of the podium <laughs> positions, because now we've got the um, lower positions coming in, and absolutely, we'll have to wait and see. I'm afraid that's all we can tell you right now. We will get that information to you as soon as we can. Well, let's go back to China. Hey, there we are. <laughs> Kian Chen. The Italians clearly are happy. Now that could well be. I bet they got them oh, That would be absolutely brilliant if they have such a young team coming here with such low expectations, I'm sure, to then actually when I spoke to them this morning after the fencing and they were very almost scared to say that we might think of a podium finish. And they sort of said it because they thought they ought to and it's be amazing if they actually have managed to and hang there's on Belarus, to Belarus and you saw the, the Belarus athlete getting a big hug, hug from her coach so I suspect Belarus was uh, Korea did come in on their own and we haven't fourth, seen I yes I think fourth. Korea must have I stayed think, in fourth I think Korea was fourth I, really, so we're, it's, I, I believe you got uh, China in first Belarus in second and, and Italy, Italy in third that'd be my guess and well, again that's just a guess what we do know is China <laughs> won <laughs> And for actual absolute confirmation, if you tune in again at quarter past six, is that right, for our yeah, prize giving? Yeah, the award ceremony. You'll be able to watch the very brief, uh, but, but also uh, no doubt very excellent award ceremony here, from live being streamed from Warsaw, Poland. There's um, Team GB just having a little bit of a chat, probably analyzing their day. I expect um, Sam will be looking at her shoot. It'll be difficult to really test her shooting out because there would have been no pressure today when she did actually compete, bringing up um, starting down in 13th position, but I'm sure she would have still benefited from getting that experience and just getting the cobwebs blown out for the start of the World Champs. Guatemala finishing. That's very likely our final. Oh, we have, it looks like there's Mexico still on oh, the course. could be Ireland as well. Is that Ireland? I bet that is Ireland. That's Ireland. I think that's Jenny McGeever running there. So she'll be rounding out, that will be rounding out the field here. Another young team, and Ireland are an example of bringing a team out just to have a taster of the Senior World Championships. That's These great. two, I think, are just competing in this relay, but still a big step up for them. There's, you know, you, you, it's experience you have to get. It's not something they can tell you about. You have to actually be there, so it's great that Ireland's here. There's a few other teams in the same boat, I think, that are here to get experience and uh, round out the field. That may well be our final team of the uh, women's relay. There's Samantha Murray, Team GB.
So we'll be uh, having a break now, and they'll be going to the cutting to the awards ceremony when we come back. Korean team, as Heather Fell from Team GB and Rob Stull, had him had a great day. Enjoyed doing what we could to help you enjoy the Modern Metallon World Championships live from Warsaw, Poland. And we'll see you again tomorrow.